Welcome to the Dirty Water Red Sox podcast, episode five, hosted guy by God Boston Sports and Grandstand Productions. Roll the intro. <laughs> And hi, everybody. I'm your host, Rob Anglin. My co-host, Italy Jet, is sadly not here today because he is taking some personal time to himself. But we do got Noah and Dev here, as always. How are we doing today, boys? Excited. Very excited. Yeah, you know, taking two, two out of three. Amazing. Socks won a oh, series. Can't believe the it. Socks won a series, man, for the first time. And it feels like a long time. This team has been struggling. This team... Has not been finding the right groove, but it is okay because it is a new month. The month of September and the hardest grind of the season. Speaking about winning the series, we're going to talk about the Kansas City Royals recap of this series today because we have a lot to talk about about the Kansas City Royals recap. Red Sox had a tough game one, but ended up bouncing back in the next two games, taking the series win in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm going to start with Noah. And I'm going to go to Dev after. We're going to talk about this Kansas City Royals recap and what we thought about this series. Obviously, after an ugly game one, turning into a good series. Take it away, Noah. I mean, that first game was about as brutal as it can get, right? James Paxton had absolutely nothing. Threw 36 pitches, uh, couldn't locate his stuff at all. I I like to think that this is just fatigue from not having pitched this so much. Oh, my God. Excuse me. Having pitched this many innings and before he was at Tommy John, which, believe it or not, I think was like 2019. Uh, he only got four outs, gave up two homers, five hits, six runs, just really brutal stuff from Paxton. Didn't get a strikeout. Command once again shaky. Uh, and then uh, they went to Brandon Walter, who was one of their September call-ups, uh, who was used as another human sacrifice, which we'll get to later uh, in the podcast. We'll talk about the human sacrifices that have occurred over the past couple of weeks. But the series ended on a high note. The Red Sox ended, taking up, ended up taking the last two games. Uh, and what I forgot to mention kind of about the first game, too, they got shut down by Jordan Lyles for eight innings. One of the worst pitchers in Major League Baseball went eight strong against the Red Sox through 114 pitches. Just absolutely brutal stuff there for Boston. Uh, but they re- they rebounded well there. Second game, they had a nine to five win. Tanner Houck was sharp up until the sixth. I think it was the sixth <laughs> inning where he completely fell apart. But that's what you get with Tanner Houck. The third time when the order comes around, Houck completely crumbles, and that's exactly what happened there against Kansas City. But they held on for the nine to five win, and then today a seven to three win. Chris Sale threw a ton of pitches. I think he threw what was it, guys? A hundred pitches today that Sale threw. Close to yeah, something like that. I'll look at this right now. Chris Sale threw. It's not going to tell me, but I think it, yes, 100 pitches today. Chris Sale threw 100 pitches through five innings. It's not very efficient, but five strong, five strikeouts, no earned runs. Probably the best he's looked since coming off the IL all in all. Um, and then they put it to, to Joe Vera, Schreiber, Bernardino. Rough outing for Kenley Jansen, who notoriously is not good in non-save situations. But again, he needed some work. I don't think he's worked in like four days. So ultimately, though, Good series win for Boston. They needed this series win for any chance to stay alive. But as we'll talk about later, their playoffs hopes are running slim and trim. It really is. And after being swept by the Houston Astros at home, the last thing you want to do is see your team go into Kansas City. And it looked like after that first game that they were going to get their asses handed to them. But they ended up figuring it out. I'm going to go to you, Dev. Tell me your thoughts about this Kansas City Royal series and what do you think is going to happen for this Red Sox team moving forward? Well, well, here's the thing. It was a huge, you know, series one for the Boston Red Sox, you know. In all honesty, after the first game, I was thinking, oh, crap, here we go. We are about to get swept by two teams, one team that's really good and one team that is emotional damage right now, 41 and like 92 right now. I mean, if we were to get swept by them, I would have given my honest opinion saying that, you know, this team is done for. We are the most saddest team right now. I would have said, Thank you, Red Sox Nation. Heim Bloom, Alex Core, we'll look for, for, for new guys to replace, you know, and, and we'll be happy. But, you know, hey, a series win is a serious win. I'll take it. You know, James Paxson, like Noah said, looked absolutely terrible in the first, you know, in the first series game. But, you know, they were talking about it in the broadcast saying that, you know, they wouldn't be surprised if they shut down, you know, James Paxson for, you know, two weeks, which I wouldn't be surprised if they do. But with this, like, you know, starting pitching, we kind of need a lot of help right here. But, I'm glad that Duval is hitting well for the Red Sox. I'm glad Devers, you know, he came close to hitting home run number 30 to, uh, this afternoon. But, you know, 
We just need some players to wake up to, you know, keep this momentum going. Like, you know, keep it going. Keep that wheel running. You know, like I've been saying since the start of this one, you know, this team is a freaking wagon. So let's hope that they can continue on this hot streak right now. Maybe win, you know, five, maybe six games. And we need a lot of help from, you know, whoever's playing the Rangers, whoever's playing the Blue Jays. But I really have some high hopes for this team. I think we're going to do well. I think we're going to surprise a lot of teams these next couple of series for sure. The one thing I got to say, too, about this Red Sox team is they need to be a little bit more consistent on the pitching side. But obviously, they're working on it. Game, let me think my thoughts on this. The first game of the series, an ugly loss, a blowout loss. You hate to see it. And just like the one that happened the other day, they kept a guy in as a human sacrifice. Another human sacrifice. We're, we're going to get into that later on because that's the talk about why Core is burning out the relievers. But that's besides the point. Game two, Alex Verdugo almost hits for the cycle. He's been heating up so good recently, and I don't know what's gotten in him, but I'm not complaining. He's been very more consistent at the plate after having that huge slump in the month of July. Looked very ugly at the plate, but he looks really good right now. He's in the ball very well. Obviously, that three-homer, leadoff homer stretch that he had against the Dodgers and the Astros, he looked really good. And in game three, obviously, today, we saw a lot of good stuff obviously from Chris Sale, even though he threw 100 pitches. And obviously, I've been waiting on to bring these out, but we got Macho Man Ooh. hitting bombs. We got yes, sir. At the game the other day, these are sick, by the way. But shout out to Masataki Yoshida because these are sick for a home run celebration. But he hit the ball very well. He finally got some lift in his swing. You'll have to see it. Speaking about lift in the swing, Adam Duvall on another planet, almost has 20 homers this year. He's been figuring it out at the plate. I know Noah's very shocked right now. And we're going to get into Duvall in a little bit later as well. I love how everything we're talking about is going to tie into what we're going to talk about in this episode. But, look, does Duvall have a future in Boston? We will see. But we'll we will find talk out. About he might. He's looking good. And now we, we're going to talk about the future, but we're going to talk about a different future. We're going to talk about the American League playoff updates. And do the Boston Red Sox – uh-oh, not the week ahead – We'll actually talk about the week ahead, actually. Let's talk about the week ahead first for the Boston Red Sox. We're playing the Baltimore Orioles and the Tampa Bay Rays coming up this week. We got to figure out how we're going to sneak into this playoff spot with the Baltimore Orioles and the Tampa Bay Rays ahead of us in the AL East. I'm going to start with Dev this time. I'm going to go our way around. Are you looking forward to this week with these two big series against these AL East Giants? Man, I mean, I wish that I could say, say that, you know, we are better than these teams, but we are not better than the Rays or the Orioles. But you have to say, ever since the, you know, Wander Franco situation, the Rays have been dipping a little bit downward in the standings a little bit. So I'm really hoping, you know, I think, I think we could surprise the Rays. You know, they were talking about this, like, you know, later on in the, uh, in the, in the stream for the uh, Boston Red Sox saying that, you know, with Wander Franco being out, you know, he's a big piece to the Tampa Bay Rays that, you know, the Red Sox can probably steal a couple of games from the Tampa Bay Rays. You know, I, I can say this as a Red Sox fan, the Tampa Bay Rays this year, they have absolutely owned us. They swept us in the four game series. You know, they took two out of three at Fenway Park, but you know, I think that it's our time to shine. That was back in April and May that they owned us. Now it's time for us to take the plate. You'll hear to hit some more dingers. You know, Raphael Devers, he needs to, you know, have some less errors. Because here's the thing. If Raphael Devers did not have as much errors as he had this year, we'd probably be looking at a playoff spot right now if it wasn't for his errors or everyone's favorite shortstop, Kike Hernandez. We'd be probably looking at probably second or third place wildcard spot. I'm not saying that we could have been a first place team, but I think that, you know, we can surprise a lot of these AL East teams. But it ain't going to be easy. You know, we need to take things one step at a time, maybe take two out of three from Tampa Bay, possibly two out of three from Orioles, even though the Orioles are the better team. And surprisingly this year, they are a first place team. But I think that if we take four out of six from this, from, you know, this, these two teams, I think we'll do fine. I think we'll do fine as well. And I think the one thing that you got to look at is going into this is are the Boston Red Sox going to play? Good baseball against the Tampa Bay Rays. And obviously, we know that it is a new – sorry, guys. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties right now. I apologize. Um, we just want to talk – we want to see the Red Sox perform well. And I think the one thing that you want to see 
is the Boston Red Sox perform well this year against Tampa Bay. Obviously, Tampa Bay owned us in the beginning of the year, like Dev mentioned, and it's been very hard for the Red Sox and all of Major League Baseball to handle the Rays at the time because in the beginning of the year, Tampa Bay looked like they were unstoppable. They, they looked like a juggernaut. Same thing with Baltimore, the surprise team. Last year, they weren't doing too well, but they ended up figuring it out. And it all started with them clicking with a calling up a lot of young guys. Gunnar Henderson was slumping. He's turned it around this year. He's having a pretty good year now. Um, Adley Rutschman, the fun fact, the Orioles haven't lost a series since Adley Rutschman's been called up. That is insanity. That's yeah, an ESPN that's, stat that's right there. Stat. That's crazy stat. That's actually crazy. And by the way, they're considering calling up Jackson Holiday at the end of the year. To, for Believe the it or not, I'm glad you mentioned that. I hate to cut you off, but today they just promoted him to AAA. So Jackson Holiday He's on the, on the way. way to AAA. One step closer to uh, one step closer to the Bigs, which is cool. He's Nineteen years way. old. Mm-hmm. Nineteen years old. Young stud, uh, damn. He is going to be something for the future for Baltimore. But, yeah, I hope the Red Sox play good baseball against the two ALEs teams. They're chasing them. They're chasing the Rays in the wild card. They're chasing the Blue Jays in the wild card. And, obviously, the division is not going to be won, let's be honest here. The, the Orioles got it on lock. Or Tampa Bay might sneak in there. They're playing a hot baseball. But the Red Sox can play good baseball. Anything is possible, especially coming up to this next week. Sorry for running on too long. I'm going to bring it to Noah. Noah, tell me what do you think about this week coming up? What do you think about the Tampa Bay Rays series in Baltimore heading up in these upcoming week? Yeah, I know we're trying to kind of move on to the next topic, so I'll keep this short and brief. Um, I'm just going to speak to you honestly as an honest-to-God Red Sox fan. I don't like this series against Tampa Bay at all. The Red Sox notoriously are horrible when they go to the trap. Um, pitching matchups aren't, you know, really favor uh, – Favorite Boston here. Day game, Bayo against Aaron Savale, who's kind of found something this year. Cutter Crawford, who's really struggled as late as of late. Uh, and then James Paxton, who's just been horrible as of late. I'm going to go on record and say that the Tampa Bay Rays end up sweeping the Red Sox this weekend. I just, Boston can't play at the trap combined with the pitching matchups. I don't like it for Boston. However, things turn back to Fenway. They've got three against Baltimore there. I think they'll take two of three. I think they'll win the Cole Urban start uh, with Tanner Houck on the mound for Boston. I think they'll lose the stale start against Kyle Bradish, but I think they will get the, the rubber match there and, and end up beating Jack Flaherty. So overall, I think they'll get swept by Tampa, but end up taking two of three from Baltimore. I would love to see them take a series against Baltimore because Baltimore has been a hot team. Tampa Bay, also a hot team throughout the year. But this brings us into our next topic because – all three teams right now have an opportunity of playing October baseball. And this is the playoff picture right now. We have a playoff update in Major League Baseball. The wild card is on the way. And I think the Boston Red Sox have an opportunity. They, it's looking bleak the way they've been playing right now. But there's still hope in Boston that we could possibly be playing baseball at Fenway Park in October. Are the playoffs out of reach for the Red Sox? Is there still hope? Are we praying for an October miracle? Let's find out. I'm going to go to Dev just because Noah ended the last segment. What do you think is going to happen at this last month of the season? you think the Red Sox sneak into the playoffs? Is it all hope end in Boston, or do we still believe in Boston here in late mm-hmm. September? Man, Rob, I mean, I want to be positive about this team. I really do. I mean, I've, I've been saying, it, saying this this whole time that, you know, this team is going to shock the world, like I said in episode four. But it's just like, you know, we just keep on kicking each other in the, you know, knees right now. It's just like this team goes on a hot winning streak. It's like an emotion roller coaster. They're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. They have a five game winning streak and then they lose the next eight games. You know, I want to say this team is going to make the playoffs, but it's just like, you know, where's the hypeness? Where's, you know, someone screaming in the dugout? You know, we need a Chris Sale. We need a David Ortiz moment where, you know, they're bringing them all into the dugout and saying, like, you know, hey, we need to win this, you know, freak, you know, this freaking, you know, series right now because you're playing the top two teams. But, you know, I, I want to stay positive. I don't want to be negative about the Red Sox because if I start being negative, then I might have to cancel myself. But I think that, you know, this team for sure is going to make it happen. I mean, I think that we're going to surprise, you know, the Orioles, maybe the Rays. It's just like we need some help, guys. We need some help from you know the teams that are playing the Blue Jays, that are playing the Rangers right right now. So I'm gonna say I think we have a shot, but probably knowing our luck, it's not gonna happen. But I'm I'm in the middle, of yes and no. But I want to. It's it's like 58 percent yes. So I'm gonna say yes. We 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 somehow squeak it in. I love that. Dev, see, the thing about Dev is he's never pessimistic. There's always optimism in there, and that's what I love about it. 
they always got to keep the positivity. Noah, what are you thinking? Do you think the Red Sox are able to somehow make a miracle run here and somehow play playoff baseball in October? Or do you think it's as good as done? We're waving the white flag, heading home, sitting on the couches, watching playoff baseball. That is not by the Boston Red Sox. You know, the way I look at it, you know, I look at Devin as Mr. Positive, right? I, I've always looked at Devin as Mr. Positive, right? Uh, I look at myself as Mr. Negative, unfortunately. Um, I, I don't see the Boston Red Sox making the playoffs. I just, I, I think it's just kind of out of reach at this point. They're five and a half games back right now. So four and a half back, even of the first uh, the first team out. Uh, I just, you know, Houston's way too experienced to miss the playoffs. Yeah. I think Texas, I mean, Texas's bullpen, when I tell you Texas's bullpen is horrendous, Texas's bullpen is absolutely horrendous. But I don't I don't think, you know, five and a half games, especially with the schedule Boston have left. You look at even past Tampa and Toronto, the Yankees, who obviously we just saw sweep the Astros, but then it's Toronto again, Texas, Chicago, Tampa Bay, Baltimore. All of those teams, but two of them I just named to you, are currently in the in the in the play in the playoffs. All but two of those teams are in the playoffs. I think they have like the third hardest schedule from here on out. It, it's going to be a challenge. Now, I, I'm not writing them off because hypothetically they, they could still sneak in, but here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to go on record and say this. If they find a way to take two of three or sweep the Rays, they need to break out the City Connect jerseys for the homestand. If they take two of three from the Rays or a sweep, Orioles, Yankees, you're getting the City Connect jerseys. That's all I'll say. Gotta bring out, yes, sir. Bring out the all reliable blue and yellow jersey that we end for October. Here's, let's go. Yes, sir. That's what we want to hear in October, baby. I'm gonna go and tell you guys what I think about the Boston Red Sox here entering October soon. I can see now. Noah's Mr. Pessimistic, as he claims. Dev's Mr. Positive. I am 50-50. I want to be Mr. Brightside, but everybody knows. On here, I'm Mr. Brightside. On TikTok, I'm Mr. Pessimistic. But Check out Rob's TikTok. Check out Rob's TikTok. Rob's TikTok. Check out my yeah. TikTok if you want to see me yelling at the Red Sox when I'm angry. But <laughs> let me tell you this right now. This Boston Red Sox team has been a roller coaster of emotions since day one. Opening day, I was there sitting in the freezing cold watching them play the Baltimore Orioles and almost have a comeback. They have shown a lot of fight late in the games. And here's something that I want to say. This team has potential to play in October, and if they can have consistent pitching. They haven't shown consistent pitching, but they have shown good offense. Our offense is ranked top three in Major League Baseball. Our defense is ranked 25th in Major League Baseball with a negative 17 DRS, which is at league worst, obviously. Thanks, Kike Hernandez. Thank you, Rafael Devers. You guys have played an amazing defense bad. this year. It's that bad. <laughs> but it's okay. But the thing is, Rafael Devers has 30 home runs, so that's even now. What did Kike Hernandez do with the bat? Oh, sorry. I love you, Kike. I'm just fucking with you. But uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> nah, here's what I'm going to say. This Red Sox team has a shot at the playoffs, and if they have a record of 19-6, and six, that is a most realistic opportunity in these next 25 games for the Boston Red Sox to get 90 wins and have an opportunity of playing Major League Baseball in October. Love this cheer from the Red Sox crowd behind me right now. No, but in real seriousness, I think this Red Sox team, I'd love – shout out to Justin producing it in the background right now. Got the hype going on with this. He's got the let's go Red Sox behind me. I really do think this Red Sox team can play playoffs baseball. I really think if they can – and I like Noah's segment right there talking about – or sorry, not segment, comment. Talking about if they bring out the City Connect jerseys because I honestly think the City Connect jerseys there is just good luck. And if you win two out of three against Baltimore, if you win the sweep or win two out of three against Tampa Bay, you're playing New York, you're playing Texas, who you owned in the beginning of the year. I would love to see the City Connect jerseys on the road. I really would. I think that would be pretty cool to see the City Connect jerseys on the road in Texas, on the road in New York. Just imagine walking in New York and seeing the City Connect jerseys. That would be sick. That would be amazing. amazing. The Boston Red Sox have opportunities here to play October baseball. I really do. But then again, part of me thinks that we're going to suffer and we're going to be watching the Houston Astros dominate in the playoffs again. But one can dream. A boss hey, ra rather have the Astros than the Yankees. Rather have that's the Astros than the Yankees. Hey, the Yankees are in last place, so where they belong. So that's always good. Where's I'd rather just not watch. If it's between the Astros and the Yankees, I think I would just rather not watch. I think I'd just turn that's the very TV off. 
It is very interesting, though. Not gonna lie. But hey, here on Guy Boston Sports, it's okay if we don't have Red Sox playoff baseball. We have Patriots football in the fall, and we have Celtics football. Or sorry, Celtics basketball. I'm in football mode right now. Celtics basketball. In <laughs> it's October. football season. It's football, it's football right. season, boys. College football was on today. UMass Boston yesterday got smashed. By the way, UMass and baseball smashed. season. Don't forget, it's baseball season too. Let's go. It is baseball season before anything? Now, right. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about Alex Cora for a minute because oh, Alex Cora is a great manager. But when it comes to the bullpen, Alex Cora does one thing and one thing very good in recent years, and that is burning out his relievers. As we all know, Alex Cora likes to overuse relievers, and we've seen it by uh there was a graphic on Nessa and I wish I had it to be able to be popped up here but you can see the bullpen usage from a lot of relievers and this causes him to use human sacrifices in twice in one week I'm gonna bring it to you Noah how you because you love Alex Gore we know we all know you're an Alex Gore lover here Big fan. how do you Big feel fan. about how do you feel about his bullpen usage obviously which we mentioned previously but also how do you feel do you think he's really burning out the relievers and if you so who do you think he's burning out the most and how do you feel about these human sacrifices? Because if that was me personally, he shouldn't deserve a job if he's ruining men's careers out here. Okay. Two things first off. This is the topic that I personally requested. At, at the list of the topics, I put this at number one. Number two, you guys, I'm going to name three guys, right? And I want you to tell me what all three of these guys have in common. Okay? Can you do that? Sure. Yeah. Matt, Matt Barnes, John Schreiber, Josh Winskowski. I butchered that, sorry. Winkowski, whatever. What do those three guys have in common? They all suck under pressure. Amazing Close. first parts of their careers in Boston and dominant, and then all of a sudden just fell off a cliff. Bingo. All three of those guys are burned out now. Matt Barnes had an all-star first half in 2021. Then he had a five ERA in the second half of the season because he worked every day. John Shriver was the only reason we had like 75 wins last year. Without John Shriver, they probably have closer to 70 wins last year. Uh, this year he can't pitch. He has no swing and miss stuff. He's been on the IL. He's, he's, he's done. Right? Josh Bukowski, crazy good first half of the season. Uh, sorry, lagging a little bit here. Middle of the season. He's a middle relief pitcher that has worked about 70 innings this year. That's overusage. All three of those guys overused by Alex Cora. And that's before even getting into the human sacrifice stuff. I think Alex Cora is burning out these relievers. Now, granted, the starting pitcher not going deep into the games doesn't help that. But I have two statistics up here to further prove that. I forget what day this was. August. I don't have a date, but Red Sox played the Astros. And I like to think of this as the Astros revenge game for what we did to them in Houston. They came into Fenway. They came into our house. And Kyle Baraclaw came into the game, right? And don't get me wrong. The Red Sox had the lead with Kyle Baraclaw in the game. Alex Cora stuck with them. And not only did he stuck, stuck with them, oh, my God, stick with them, he stuck with them to the tune of 94 pitches, 4.1 innings pitched, 11 hits, 10 earned runs, 5 walks, 3 hit by pitches, and 1 strikeout. You think it gets wow. you think it gets worse than that? It doesn't really get worse than that, but it happened again. Uh, oh, no. September. No, 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 no. I had the wrong game up, but hold on. Technical difficulties. Uh September 1st, Friday, September 1st. Red Sox are playing the Royals. Not a great start from James Paxton. Mauricio Jobera comes in, and out comes Brandon Walter. Brandon Walter can't pitch. Four innings, ten hits, seven earned runs. Granted, no walks. Five strikeouts. These guys are being laid out to dry. Come on, man. What are we doing here? Man, these poor guys, man. Also, I don't know about Brandon Walter, but I'm going to say this right now. I've been tweeting it out one after it happened. Hashtag justice for Barracloud, man. That man had a 2.7 ERA. He was feeling terrible. That poor man then got sent down to AAA, which sucked. We're ending Brandon careers Walter. out here. We're ending careers Brandon out Walter, here. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, though. He, he's a gnome scrub. I'm sorry, Brandon Walter. I hate to be that guy. 
got to be harsh on you. I I remember you. You're not that good. I love you. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't I'm not a hater. I I I <laughs> prop, please don't cancel me. Don't don't hate me. I want to have a good connection. Come after it. He but, lives in Boston. Brandon Walter, come on the pod one time. Yeah, What's right. Up? Yeah, please. I just want to talk up, to you. Walter? You're probably a great guy, just not not a good golf <laughs> player. Sorry, but um, <laughs> honestly, I've noticed this too a lot with Alex Cora. He overuses relievers, and another guy that I want to take my time out to say known i am a known hanzo robles lover over here uh no obviously if you guys don't see my tiktok again check it out because i have entertaining videos about it but poor hanzo robles caught some strays on my tiktok when he probably didn't deserve it he was pitching amazing with the red Sox at one point in 2021 down the stretch 2022 goes into chicago and he gets a little overused and i uh... say Guy. And I quote, I'm not going to swear on here because I already, I, I'm not going to try, I'm trying to keep this as clean as possible. F you, you suck. You effing suck. F you, Robles, at the top of my lungs. And he didn't deserve it. But now I'm, I've woken up and I realized, yes, I understand he wasn't that good. And Mets fans, I'm sorry you had to deal with him for other years too. But I think Alex Cora just overused a lot of relievers and i wasn't aware of it until noah pointed it out to me and i sat there i was like damn matt barnes was really good then he got overused he was thrown into so many non-save situations during that year and looked what happened lost the closer role and then you think about it he lost that closer role in 21 winkowski at the beginning of the year amazing all of a sudden he just starts to not pitch as well because that's the thing with overusing relievers too. A lot of you get more, I would say, scouting reports on pitchers because then more you see them more. You see their more rhythm, their repertoire. You see their patterns, and teams pick up on that. They have scouting reports so they can see more of their pitch mix. So that's another reason why too. John Schreiber, I agree. Amazing twenty twenty two. It reminds me of also Garrett Whitlock. I feel is a little bit overused as. Well, that's another Daniel Bard situation, I would feel like. But that's a special case. On, that's a special case. Yeah. Yeah. Right, not right. as bad. Not as bad. But obviously, John Schreiber, Garrett Whitlock, two guys picked up from the Rule 5 who ended up being amazing relievers for the Red Sox. And then all of a sudden, their second year, they're not as dominant. And I'm hoping, and I'm fingers crossed, I know this ain't Chris Martin. I hope this doesn't happen to Chris Martin because he's been one of our most dominant oh. relievers. And I hope and I hope next year that this doesn't happen because – Chris Martin has been so good. But all I'm going to say is, Alex Cora, I respect you as a manager. You're a player's manager. You got us a World Series. But please let these guys have – give your guys a Arms. break. Save your <laughs> bullpen, please, and thank you. Now, sorry for rambling, but Dev, tell me how you're feeling about this. I had to get that off my chest. Also, <laughs> shout out Hansel Robles. Great guy. But – um. Dev, how, tell me how you're feeling about Alex Corum burning out relievers. Do you feel like he burns them out? And if so, do you feel like this pattern will ever change? I feel like this pattern will never change with Alex Cora. I feel like he's just going to keep on burning relievers. I mean, here's the thing. If we go one for 24 in the next, you know, 25, 26 games, sure, burn all our relievers because you know what? I love you, Alex Cora. I really do. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised during the offseason we say, Goodbye to you, and we look at another manager. I love you, Alex Cora, as a manager. You know, you won us a World Series. You know, you defend us really well, you know, in arguments and whatnot. But, you know, letting that guy Barracuda come in to pitch and, you know, pitch four out of one innings, like, that that just, like, that that's just bad management right there. That should, It reminds me of MLB The Show moment where you're just like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to let my relief pitcher, like, pitch. Four and one third inning. I'll you know I'll let them score ten runs. I don't really care how much I lose by. If it's seventeen to one, so be it. You know the energy will go right down to like you know one percent, and you know it, it'll be just like that. That that reminds me of you know I want me to show some diamond dynasty moments, some right there. So it's just like Alex Cora. If you're just like Kyle Murray, you want to play video games, go right ahead. Keep on burning up our pitchers. Just let them burn. But you know what? It's not going to help you out if you want to have a future with the Boston Red Sox right now. You got to let people pitch maybe one on one, one on one third inning, maybe possibly two in a close safe, safe situation. But you just have to have better time management with these relief pitchers. Let them pitch one inning, like an inning and a half or whatnot. You know, 
Because if a player is giving up 10 runs in four and one third innings, shouldn't that be a little bit concerning as a manager instead of being like, you know, it, this sounds like the freaking beers and video game and chicken Red Sox. Like, you know, hey, yep. You, you, you guys pitch, pitch four and one third inning. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. You know, that that's totally fine. That, that's basically saying, yeah, yeah, go right ahead. Go go back with your ex. You know, she, she, she'll be totally fine with that. Like, come, come on, now, it's Cora. Like, you, you, you have to think about time management and game situations. Like, you know, if, if that was like an Boone situation, I'd just be like, you know what, just, just go right ahead and do it. You know, you're going to get fired anyways. But, you know, it's just like Alex Cora, if you want a future with the Boston Red Sox, just like we've been saying, like, you know, in the private chat, this team needs to go 19 and six in order just to make a playoff. If you want to win 90 games, if you want to, you know, contend, if you want to be good. So, Alex Core, get some better game management skills with your relief pitchers. And you just got to keep digging and don't make stupid decisions, man. I mean, we, we, we want this to be a positive podcast. We really do. We don't want to talk, you know, badly about you unless it's Trevor, you know, Noah's favorite topic, Trevor's story. We, we can talk about him, but, you know, don't want to talk bad about you, Alex Core, because I love you. I want you to stay over at Sock. I if you, but, <laughs> I was, listen, listen. No, Noah just is just like, you know what? Let, let me take Cora to Logan. I'm going to ship him off. I'm going to put him in the package, and, you know, we'll set you off to Madagascar. We'll let you, you know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll ship him Boston. Right? You'll, you'll be the person to be like, hey, for the let, me, let me get my Maserati. Let me pick you up, and you know what? I'm going to take you to that goddamn airport, airport and we'll I find a better management. I, I would take him to the airport. I'd be his personal. Oh, leader. I know. You would take him, Duval, Trevor Story. You, you'd be gladly to take all those three people to Logan and be like, you know what? We, 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 we cannot use you right now. Sayonara. Well, see you later. But, you know, it, it's just that, you know, the team needs to have better time management with, you know, using your relief pitchers. Because you don't want to burn out your relief pitchers, even no. even if it's a closer setup man or whatnot. You have to use time management well. And if that's what Alex Cora needs to do well, then the Red Sox will be making a playoff. If not, you can just sit down, beer and chicken, one and 24. Go, go right ahead, man. Let us go one and 24. You know what? Make our days because you know what we we need to say say some stuff about you if we go one for twenty four in the next twenty five games. So you know what make make it happen. Burn all the relievers. Go right ahead. Be my guest. All I know is I hope that this doesn't mean that everybody in the Red Sox bullpen needs Tommy John surgery by uh, February. Um, oh, I also shout out Bobby Valentine, the greatest Red Sox manager of all time. Speaking about this, I just I just thought about this while you were talking. I saw Craig Council was available to be a manager for any other team as his contract's expiring. And I always thought about this too. Would it be a situation like what the Celtics? Let, let's bring, let's go to the NBA for a second. Brad Stevens was struggling as a coach. They brought in Ime Udoka. They put Brad Stevens as a GM. He ends up doing good in the front office. Do you see a situ I mean, do you see a situation where the Red Sox could be like, listen, it's not working as a manager, but we want to keep you in the organization. We want you to be like, GM, and you obviously have out time bloom as president of baseball operations. Do you guys see that as a chance before we get into our next topic? Because we're getting into half hour range here, which is a great time to talk. But do you guys think that if let's say we did get a new manager, wouldn't it be nice to see Alex Cora stay in the organization as a GM? Because at the end of the no. day, I know no, <laughs> well, I know Noah says no. But if that is the case scenario, do you, I mean, do you guys think it's possible? I mean, it happened in the NBA. Can Have you ever seen it happen in the MLB? Because I sure as hell have. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it would be very interesting to see happen. Here's the thing. If that mar managerial situation happens and Cora is the GM and, you know, we ship off Heim Bloom, here's the thing. If Cora can trade for, you know, Shoei Atani and somehow get Mike Trout, that would be an A-plus move for the Boston Red Sox. I would love to see – Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, you know, a two-way pitcher and a dh -er. And Mike Trout, because we could use some outfield help, even though our outfield is great, I would love to see a managerial situation like that. If Cora can, you know, make the pitching great, acquire some, you know, good, you know, amazing talent, and, you know, trade for some, you know, higher prospecting players like a Shohei, probably sign Mike Trout or trade for him and not let, let the whole farm, you know, system down, then I'd say that would be an A plus move, but you know if he doesn't, then it, it's a bad idea. But I I think I would love to see it. Is Core better GM than he is manager? 
we'll find out in the next couple of uh, weeks from now. I think that would be pretty cool. I just thought about that. I just really thought about it because there are some a lot of managers that could be used coming in the offseason if Cora's contract were to expire. Speaking about futures in Boston, we got an amazing outfielder right now and Adam Duvall, who is tearing the cover off the ball here in the month of August, in the month of July. And does he have a future here in Boston? And this outfield, this Red Sox outfield, has a lot of potential right now in the future. And do you see a situation where Adam Duvall is in this outfield next year? I'm going to start with you, Noah. Do you feel like Adam Duvall has a future here in Boston? Because I know you've, you've had your thing in the past about Adam Duvall. You know you, you love and you hate him at times. But do you feel like he has a future in Boston? And if you do, do you think he has a future in this Red Sox outfield? And if so, where do you think he is? If he doesn't, where do you? what do you think is going to happen with Adam Duvall next year? Is he a Boston Red Sox in 2024? So we are kind of getting up there on time, so I'm just going to kind of keep my thoughts on you know, everything from here and I'll kind of brief, especially on this one. Because uh, believe it or not, I just did a video on this with Grandstand Productions. If you haven't, uh, if you're not subscribed to Grandstand Productions YouTube channel, go subscribe. Uh, we're doing videos once a week talking about stuff all Red Sox. Uh, and I actually just did a video basically titled this, Does Adam Duvall Have a Future of Boston? Uh, and the short answer to that, you know, you kind of spark those. Yes, I think he does. I've come around on Adam Duvall a lot. Um Really struggled post IL, you know, was kind of on a heater. Uh, I I never really liked Adam Duvall though, even when he was on that you know, little heater in April. But he's he's definitely kind of grown on me. He's hitting for average this year, which is something we haven't seen since like 2018 with Duvall. Um, but short answer, yes, I think he does have a future in Boston. Uh, and personally, I would give him the Kike Hernandez contract for next year. One year, ten million dollars. You can come back for one year, ten mil. Prove you still got it. Prove you can still produce. And then we could just keep talking one year deals. But short answer, yes, I think Adam Duvall does and will be back in Boston for next season. I like that answer. I agree. I'm going to get into it in a second. I'll keep it brief myself, too, in a moment. I'm going to go to Dev. Do you think Adam Duvall has a future here in the with the Boston Red Sox? And if so, is it a DH role or is it an outfield role, you think? Well, well, here's the situation we have to think about, and I'll keep it as brief as possible. I want to say yes, Adam Duvall does have a future here. With the Boston Red Sox, but 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 think about the situation here. Kyle Schwarber, he was ranking it up here in Boston. You know, Kyle from Waltham, he was hitting absolute dingers, piss missiles, you call it. You know, playing first base, celebrating his first throw to first base. You know, and we we, we all wanted him back. Red Sox Nation wanted you know Kyle Schwarber back. I feel like this could be another like you know Kyle Schwarber situation. He's ranking home runs. You know, if we do make the playoffs, it'll probably hit a lot. But, you know, we're just relying on Adam Duvall right now. I want to say, yes, he does have a future with the Boston Red Sox, but it's time freaking bloom. I, you know, I agree with Noah. I think he gets offered a one-year deal, but I I wouldn't be surprised if they let Adam Duvall walk because that's a high bloom thing that they they do. You know, we want his inner Bogarts back. We want a Kyle Schwarber, you know, even the infamous Mookie Betts. But, you know. What did Heim Bloom do? Like he hasn't made like, you know, a big move minus Schwarber and I guess you can say Adam Duvall, maybe Trevor Story if he works out. But other than that, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Duvall walks. That is true. Adam Duvall just saying, by the way, guys, has been had a had a good resurgence season with the Boston Red Sox. This year, 273 average, 19 homers, 51 RBIs, and an OPS of 927. Also had four stolen bags in there, surprisingly. I think Adam Duvall does have a future with the Boston Red Sox, and I truly want to see him in either a corner outfield spot or the DH. And the reason why I say this, he's not terrible defensively in center field, but you can't keep having him here. And that's just what the outfield talk as well, too, with Jaron Duran being this good. And I think Jaron Duran is going to be even better probably next year. You want to keep him in every day. You don't want to keep platooning him and Duvall. So I think at the end of the day, they might, this is a tough situation here because you have so many guys here. Do they re-sign Justin Turner, keep him at the DH or the leadership role? But then you I would need to free so. up the space if you want to keep Adam Duvall because he's younger and has good pop. It's an interesting story. Do you trade Verdugo in the offseason? Do you trade Verdugo and then you free up a right field spot, slot Duvall in right field, put Duran in center, Yoshida in left, or have Yoshida D play there, or Duran play center, move Yoshida to right. It's so many options that you have with this team. Even free agents like Cody Bellinger, you can get a better defensive center fielder out there too. Put Duran in left, put Yoshi Duvall in right, Yoshida DH. And it's just so many options here that you could do. But I think Adam Duvall does come back. I think he has a spot with this team. And he has been amazing for the Red Sox, especially down the stretch in August. Player of the week last week. Great 
yeah. resurgence after the IL. He was on a tear. He was on a tear in Houston, on a tear against the Dodgers. It's good to see Adam Duvall finally figuring it out here after a struggle in his first – after coming off the IL. He swung out, struck out a lot. But, hey, he's back, and he's hitting for average. He's looking good. You'll have to see it. And as always, guys, I'm going to end this episode on a high note. Just want to say thank you guys for listening to this episode today. And as always, guys, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And subscribe to Guy Boss and Sports. Check out our videos. We post every day about all sports, baseball, basketball, football, you name it, hockey, all Boston sports. And if you want to check out Grandstand Productions, we post Boston Red Sox sports content weekly and talk about strictly about the Boston Red Sox. Listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify as well. And I'm going to roll it before we go to the outro. We have a new segment here and a new way to end the episodes. I'm going to choose someone to say the outro today. And I think tonight I'm going to go with you, Noah. Take it away before we go to the outro. Rob, this is um this is an honor. I hope you know that I've been waiting for this <laughs> moment now for a very long time. So we gotta make this one count, right? Um, I love that dirty water. Roll the outro.